Let's talk about condensation polymerization at A level. So we see this in year 13. And this is a great topic, in my personal opinion, because as well as just the tiniest bit of new content, it also allows us to revise functional groups that we've seen before. So our esters and our amides. So we're killing two birds with one stone, some revision and some new content at the same time. So when it comes to condensation polymerization, um, that is where we have our monomers and we produce a polymer but we also release a small molecule which is of course different to addition polymerization which we see with alkenes where when those monomers join up there is no there's nothing else that's released it's just the polymer now when it comes to condensation polymerization there are two main types of condensation polymers that we should recognize, again, based on functional groups that we've seen before. The first one, polyesters. But before we can talk about polyesters, let's make sure we know what esters look like. And then the polyesters become really easy as a result of that. So if we talk about esters, one way that we can make an ester, the first way that we learn, is by reacting together a carboxylic acid. I'm just going to choose R, just a random carboxylic acid like this reacting with an alcohol. Okay, I'm calling this R dash just to show it's a different R, but it's still just, you know, the rest of it, we don't care about it. And when those come together, well, we lose the OH from the carboxylic acid, we lose the H from the alcohol, those come together, H, H, O, H2O, as the small molecule that we lose, and then we end up forming our ester, where this carbon is now bonded to this oxygen. So we end up with something that looks like this, okay? So when it comes to a polyester, so that's just a long repeating chain with our ester bonds or ester links, it's based exactly off of this, but in order for our chain to continue, we can't just have one of each functional group. We need the functional groups to be on both sides of the molecules so that they can attach chain, like end on. So instead of just a regular carboxylic acid, we will instead have a di carboxylic acid. And instead of just a regular alcohol, we will have a diol. Now, how does that change the structure of your polyester? Well, we just add a little bit on the end, right? Because on this side of the dicarboxylic acid, this OH from this carboxylic acid group would react in exactly the same way as this one, in the sense that this OH is going to come off and then that would bond with another diol molecule that's chilling over to that side. Okay, same with the diol, we would still lose this hydrogen from the, o, from the OH here, and then that would go on and bond with another dicarboxylic acid that's chilling over there. So to, sh to represent that here, we would have still this C and this double bond O over there. On this side of the R dash, we would have this O here, but to show that this is repeating and this is connected to the next one and the next one and the next one and the next one, all we do is show trailing bonds. They don't have to be that long, I'm just being dramatic, okay? On either side to show that it's a repeating unit, it's a repeating chain, it's, that's not the end of the molecule. And that's it, really, okay? If we were to change this into an equation, we would have to represent our waters, include those, and show how many water molecules we are losing as we're producing our polymer. So if we start by saying we have got, hang on, I'm gonna get rid of this red just to clear it up a bit. It served its purpose, I hope anyway. Any questions, make sure that you leave them in the comments. Okay, bye-bye, bye-bye, bye-bye. If we were to write this as an equation, because this is just a really, really long chain, we don't usually put specific numbers to it. Instead, we just say N, where N is 
a number. N is the number of monomers, right? So if we've got N of our dicarboxylic acid and we've got N of our diol, then when it comes to our polymer, the length of this polymer chain is going to have a length of N, okay? Because you need one of each to make your polymer. Now, how many water molecules does that correspond to? Oh no, now I think I need my red back. Oops, I'm gonna draw it back again, it's okay. So, to show how many water molecules we lose, well, we consider how many would we lose per every N of our monomers. So we lose one here between them, so that would be N, but then we also lose another OH. Hang on, sorry. We also lose another H, OH, from either side. So those two add up, H, H, O, to give another water molecule. So that's another N. So, so far that's two N waters. But we have to also consider that eventually, eventually the polymer is going to end, which means that eventually the, um, the ends are not going to lose a water molecule. So it'll be 2N all the way up until we terminate. And so the overall number of water molecules will be 2N minus one, where the one represents when we get to the end of the polymer chain. And that is essentially it for our polyesters. Again, there are a few specific polyesters um, I should know, is there one specific polyester that you should recognize? But when it comes to drawing the repeating unit, this is what it's going to look like if you've got a dicarboxylic acid and a diol. But, but, and however, you can also produce esters with just one individual monomer if, I'm gonna get rid of this now, say goodbye. If you have one individual monomer that contains both of the functional groups that we need. So instead of having a dicarboxylic acid and a diol, instead we can have just one molecule where on one end we've got our carboxylic acid and on our other end we have our alcohol. So this is a hydroxy carboxylic acid. So if we've got multiple of these, they can just condense and polymerize with each other. And we would form that ester in exactly the same way we would lose the OH from the carboxylic acid group as it connected to another one. And we would lose the H of the alcohol group as it connected to one this side. And so our repeating unit would just look like this to start off with, but to show that this is a long repeating chain, we would need our trailing bonds going, I, wow. I've gone, that's ridiculous. That's just a little bit silly. Okay, our trailing bonds showing that these are connecting to a next one and the next one and the next one and the next one. Again, if we wanted to turn this into an equation, we would say we need N, where N is just the number of our monomer. So N of these, that's going to produce a polymer of chain length N, because you only need one of these to make each repeating unit of this. And because we are losing water molecules as well, we need to consider how many of those we're losing. Well, we've got an H and an OH, so that's just the same number as N, so N H2O. But just like before, to consider the end of the polymer, instead of N, it's going to be N minus one. Fantastic. If we were looking at a polyamide instead of a polyester, oh, okay, take a deep breath, we're gonna go there. I'm getting rid of this again, say goodbye. A polyamide, very, very similar. When we're producing an amide, we've got a couple of choices. We can have a carboxylic acid, just like with an ester, or we can have an acyl chloride. To be fair, we can have an acyl chloride with an ester as well. So let's have, just to switch it up, let's have an acyl chloride. Okay, and then we have our amine. Oh, 
okay? When these come together, that is a very wonky bond. Don't like it. Let's try again. When these come together, just like with the carboxylic acid and the alcohol, instead of losing the OH from the carboxylic acid, we lose the Cl from the acyl chloride. And then instead of losing the H from the alcohol, we lose the H from the amine. So like that. In this case, our small molecule is HCl, hydrogen chloride. And our amide will look like this, where this carbon is now bonded to this nitrogen that lost its hydrogen. Like that, okay? Again, very, very similar in structure to an ester, but instead of an O here, it's just an NH there. If we were turning this into a poly amide or in the context of amino acids a polypeptide all we would need is a di like two functional groups so we can put a di oil chloride wow whoa i really went in reverse that was really strange and a diamine or diamine and then we would consider that the same thing is happening on both of those sides as well. So on this side, we're losing this Cl to the next one on this side. And for the amine, we're losing the H to the next acyl chloride on that side. So to show our repeating unit, we would just extend this C double bond O again to represent this carbon. And then on this side, we would have our NH to represent that one. And to show that this is a repeating unit and it's going on and on and on and on and on, we would have our trailing bonds. And that's our repeating unit. Let's turn this into an equation. Hopefully this is starting to click and it's making sense. If not, leave me a comment. Okay. If we had N of our dioil chloride and we had N of our diamine, then that would give us a polymer of chain length N. And in terms of how many HCl molecules we are losing, just like before, we're going to lose one HCl here in between, so N. Then we lose another HCl there, so that's another N. So, so far that's two N, but to take into account the ones at the end, we also put that minus one, so we end up with two N minus one HCl. Just as before, we could have both functional groups on the same monomer so that we would only need one monomer instead of two. So let's do that last one because that links us on really, really nicely to our amino acids topic, which I already have a video on, I think, I hope. Where if we've got one monomer, that on one side has got our carboxylic acid or acyl chloride. I'm going to make it a carboxylic acid this time just to make this an amino acid. And an amine or amino group on the other side. Then this can form a condensation polymer with just more monomers of itself. Where on this side we lose the OH or if it was a CL we would lose the CL. On this side, we lose the H to the one on the other side. So our repeating unit, C double bond O, lost the OH, N, H, lost the other H. But to show that this is repeating and going on and on, how many times have I said that? It should be sinking in by now. Hopefully, we show our trailing bonds. If we were to write this as an equation, then we can say we've got N of those, that's going to give us a polymer of chain length N. And then this time we're losing water. How many water molecules are we going to lose? Well, we've only got one lot or N, H-H-O, so N. But to take into account the ones at the end, N minus one, H2O. And that's it, yay.
that was quite nice. By the end, hopefully you start to see it's the same thing every single time. And once you can form an ester bond and an amide or a peptide link, you can do all of these questions. Make sure that you have liked, commented and subscribed and I will see you in the next one.